Hello, and today's video is going through the Virgin Media Hub on how to improve your Wi-Fi connectivity if you just have the hub itself and also how to put this hub in modem mode. Now I will stipulate the settings are uh, very similar for the Superhub 3 and 4 and the normal Superhub 5 but if you have the full fiber uh, 5x I believe it is that does not currently have modem only mode that is due in an update which will be out this year I've been told so let's carry on so I originally have my modem in modem only as standard I've taken it out of modem only mode um, but I still need the IP address of 192.168.100.1 because I'm going through my own Unify controller if you're just connecting to the hub itself you'll need 192.168.0.1 and then the password to log in will be underneath the hub itself. So we've got the check router status, which is on another one of my videos where you can check if there's any network issues to help diagnose any intermittent problems uh, and see one of my other videos for that. So let's go for that. Well, I've already put the password in ready, I'll log in. So this is the home page of the Virgin Hub. So you can see things are connected, uh, wireless is on, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, internet's on, and the VoIP is on as well. So for modem mode, you've literally got the setting on the left hand side called modem mode. It's just a case of clicking it, clicking enable modem mode, and then applying the changes. Once you apply them, your hub will reboot and then only port one will be available for data output on the hub. Um, with the uh, Superhub 3, the light will at the front will turn pink or a very light red. For the Superhub 4, the light will go green. And then for the Superhub 5, I think the light also goes green on the bottom right. And it's simple as that. The hub will reboot and it'll be in modem mode. It does take a few minutes for it to go through that process. Um, and then you'll need the same IP address that I've got on mine, which is the 192.168.100.1 to access the settings. So that's modem mode, we've got that out of the way. So generally, if you want to adjust any of your Wi-Fi settings to make your connection better, um, around your home uh, the default if you go to advanced and wireless wireless signal these will be the default settings for the hub from factory unless it's been changed by your installation engineer um, so it will have smart Wi-Fi enabled uh, which will stop you adjusting any of the channel settings and then you've got each of the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz enabled as well. Now, these hubs broadcast the uh, 2.4 and 5 as one name. Uh, I will show you later on that you can separate them if you want to. Um, most devices nowadays do work with both enabled, but there are some devices that do not. So if we take it out of smart Wi-Fi mode, Right, so we can now alter these settings. Now, with smart Wi-Fi mode, it, it causes the hub to scan the surrounding network, and if it detects any interference from any nearby devices transmitting Wi-Fi, it will adjust those channels to move your device's uh, frequency of your hub away from those. But the problem is some devices will follow and chase and will affect how that will connect so you'll constantly have that changing and it will cause it to go round in circles and basically cause non-stop issues 
this will also take place if someone's installed um, a new router or uh, an extender this will cause the same issue um, so sometimes you can have Wi-Fi that works perfectly for ages and then suddenly it starts misbehaving can be down to that so with it in manual mode you can basically change the channel width on each if you want to stipulate and specify and then the individual channels that they're on now the difference between 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz is 2.4 gigahertz has a longer range but a slower speed 5 gigahertz is a shorter range but a faster speed so 5 gigahertz will go up to about 450 to 500 megabits per second depending depending on the device you're speaking to 2.4 will go up to about 70 to 90 megabits per second on the device now with the channel width for 2.4 between 20 or 40 or 20 on its own um, is, is the best it's pretty much the only ones uh, available and then the channels the most popular channels that work well with uh, multiple devices are channels 6 10 or 11 some devices do not like channel 1 uh, but 6, 10 and 11 are the most popular channels that seem to work with multiple devices. In some cases, you may have a neighbor's hub or another device transmitting on that, but it's all about testing it what works for your area, because I could say go on this channel, but you may find that another channel works better. So it's always worth changing it, trying it and seeing how it reacts and how all your devices perform. Uh, with 5 gigahertz, uh, you've got a number of different channels. Once again, these can fluctuate depending on any interference. Uh, there isn't really a, a channel that I find in particular with a 5 gigahertz. Um, I've generally pretty much had a decent performance from any of the channels. It's automatically chosen. You can leave it on auto if you want to and then just monitor it and see how it performs. Um, and that's where you've got the 80 megahertz channel width that's where you're getting the, the higher channels with the f higher bandwidth for the 5 gigahertz signal. So that will pretty much uh, enable you to tinker with the settings to give your devices better connectivity and it's all about adjusting them for what works for your home. Now if you want to separate the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz you can go into security. In security you have got the both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz listed and you can change the names of them individually and even change the passwords of them individually and basically that is the end of the quick tips setup for the Virgin Media super hubs and hope this helps and enables you to get better connectivity if still you have any speed or connection issues it would be worth looking at my other video which goes into a deep dive on what to look at at the hub to see if there's any network issues but also you may need something like a mesh system or an access point system depending on the size of your property and the performance required thank you for watching please like and subscribe speak to you later